Hey friends, Dylan Bates here, the final cut. Bro, I am so excited to be here with you on the FX Factory YouTube channel. Today, we're gonna be taking a look at five exceptional plugins for Final Cut Pro. This is gonna be a very quick overview of each of these plugins, but if you want more information with more in-depth videos and links to purchase these plugins, there will be links down below. The first plugin I wanna take a look at is the Hawaii Key Keyer. Now there is already a keyer built into Final Cut Pro, but it does not have anywhere near the features that the Hawaii Key keyer has. I have a few green screen shots here, but you'll notice some problems. First of all, there's this shadow happening here. There's also some vignetting happening from the lenses. We're gonna go ahead and bring in the Hawaii Key keyer. And already it's doing a pretty good job. I'm going to use the green version. There's also a blue version which has all of these same features. Then you'll notice right down here at the bottom, we have the ability to see just the matte version, which is a black and white version. We also have the ability to see the analysis version. And so you can very quickly get an idea of what is a solid color, what's an edge. We can also just see the main source, so the original source footage, as well as all of these other views over here. So the Hawaii Key Keyer has this amazing feature called Screen Clean. So right now, here is the regular source. And if you take a look at the background, you can see it's got that vignetting. If I go ahead and go over here to the right hand side and enable Screen Clean, then I go back and we'll go ahead and take a look at the screen clean feature. You can see how it actually evens out the green screen. It removes a lot of those shadows that were happening in the green screen, making it a much cleaner key, which is going to give you better results in the end. A big factor was that vignetting that it has taken away. So if we go ahead and set this to final key, we can see the final output. Now I'm gonna go ahead and switch this over to analysis mode, and I'm going to disable the screen clean, and you can see how this vignette Adding is here I'm going to enable it and once again it's cleaning up the green screen giving you a much better key now you'll see all these small dots happening around here so all we need to do is drag up the density just a little bit and just like that we have a really clean key now there are hundreds of options to really refine your key we can jump into secondary options here we can jump into matte options de spilling all of this, and there's definitely exceptional tutorials on that. I wanna keep this nice and short. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable analysis mode, and you can see we've got a good key. We'll jump on over to this dog here. I'm gonna drag on the keyer there. It's already doing a pretty good job. Let's enable the screen clean, and then we'll drag up the density a little bit. And again, if I enable analysis mode, we can see it's doing an exceptional job of cutting out the dog. Something that this keyer does really well is it works much better with hair compared to the built-in tools. So once again, I'll bring on the keyer here. Right out of the box, it's doing a pretty decent job on the hair, but we can go ahead, enable screen clean, adjust our density accordingly, and our include sliders here. We could also bring up the edge protect sliders if we want, but then we could also jump down here to the de-spill options. We could bring down the brightness, get that hair kind of matching with itself, and we could adjust the saturation accordingly. Maybe if we want to pull out a little bit of the green, we'll just pull down on the green slider and get it looking a little closer to the magenta side maybe. So now we've got all of this hair detail happening on our model with just a few clicks. So that is a very basic overview of the Hawaii Key Keyer. It's extremely powerful and I definitely I recommend you check out one of the links down below to get more information on this plugin. The next plugin we're gonna take a look at is Gritty, and Gritty is going to absolutely take your split screens to the next level. So you can see here, I have four different shots that I want to separate out into a split screen. Now you might in Final Cut Pro mess with your cropping, adjust it with your position and all that, but Gritty is going to save you so much time. We'll go ahead and select these three lower clips and I'll push V to disable them. Then we're gonna select our topmost shot and find Gritty here in my effects panel and I'll drag that right on there. Now it has already created six versions of this same video and that is because it is in layout mode. Layout is how you actually set up the grids. I only have four shots, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring down my columns down to two columns, and then we also have two rows. If I only wanted two shots, I could just set it to one row. But you can see how you can really drag up the columns and the rows as much as you like, giving you a ton of flexibility 
over how many split screens you have. So once we've got that set up, we can go ahead and scroll down a little bit further and find this offset rows feature. So we can slide it over to the left or to the right if we want kind of a unique looking grid. And then if we want to adjust the placement, we could offset the entire grid so that it is centered up. Then scroll on down to the width slider and drag these out. That might be a little bit too much, but one really handy feature is if we want all of these to be a 16 by nine aspect ratio, we can go ahead and enable the link width. And so that's gonna lock it to that ratio. Then we can bring the cell size down so that they all fit within our scene. Change the offset on this a little bit, just like so. Now that we've done that, we can dial in the roundness of our corners here. We could also enable or disable the outline. We could bring up the width of the outline if we wanted, and we could change the color of that outline. So let's say I wanna change it over to my FX factory color there. And then finally, if you wanna add some really nice dynamic animation, you can come down here and find the animate in, and there's also an animate out checkbox. So I'm gonna go ahead and enable that. They all animate in really, really nicely. And if you wanted to add in a little extra pizzazz, you could bring in the rotation, you could bring in the opacity, we could do tint. So you can see if I play it through, they look really professional, all the grids come in really nicely. We could also change the sequence, so if we wanted it to come in in sequence, so it's one after another, we can press play like that, and so they'll actually be offset a little bit, which is really nice. We have our initial grid layout. How do we get the grid onto all of these clips? Scroll up to the very top and disable layout mode. Then I'm going to select the clip that we set the layout on. I'm gonna push Command C. I'm going to select all three of the other clips, and then I'm going to push Command Shift V. You can also go on up to edit, and paste effects. So now all three of these other clips have that same grid applied to them. All we need to do now is selecting each of these clips, I'm going to enable it with V, and I'm going to drag up the location. So now you can see my clip has jumped over here to the right side, then I'll select the next clip, enable that, and drag up the location so that it's down here in the bottom left. And finally, we can enable this bottom one and bring it over to the far right. Just like that, we very quickly have a grid. So this tool is exceptionally powerful and it can really give you a lot of flexibility, especially if you're working with a lot of split screens, maybe you're doing a Zoom conference, tons of options with this particular plugin. Highly, highly recommend, links down below. The next tool that I love using and you will actually see being constantly used throughout the duration of this video is Markup. Markup is exceptional for creating tutorial style videos or just calling attention to something on the screen. So you'll locate Markup in your titles here under Markup and you can see all of the amazing tools that comes with this plugin. Some of the ones that I use the most frequently are Frame Zoom and Frame Pan. So all we need to do to use Frame Zoom and Frame Pan, we will bring it down on the timeline just like so. And you will see up here in my browser, it actually creates this really nice rectangle that we can use to zoom in on something on the screen. So let's say I want to zoom in on the Adjustment Layers plugin for FX Factory. I just bring that rectangle over the top of that. And if I play through, you can see how it very nicely animates. Now, if we want to actually change the scale on that, we can actually click on the corner and change the zoom amount here by adjusting the scale of the rectangle. So it's very, very handy. If we don't want the animation of it zooming in, we can disable it here in the top left. So it'll actually do kind of a jump cut zoom just like this. And you can see how it zooms in. But I have the build out animation still left in. So if I continue to play, it'll do a very nice zoom out animation. It also has the frame pan feature. So if we wanted to actually pan after we've zoomed, we would drag the frame pan underneath the frame zoom feature. And now all we need to do is adjust our offset. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the offset here in the right hand panel but you'll see nothing is happening, so I'm gonna actually have to move forward in time. What I recommend is going to the middle of your frame pan where the animation is completed, and then we can adjust our frame pan accordingly. So now it'll do this really nice pan animation after the zoom. 
Now let's say we want to call attention to something on the screen. Well, this plugin has tons of features for that. We have stuff like this highlight click. So if I were to drag this over something that I think you should show that you're clicking, so let's say we want to show that we're clicking on the transform. I just press play and now it has that nice little highlight click. We could actually change the colors to better match our branding perhaps. And we could change it over to something like pop. So it's got a really nice clean looking animation. But that's not all. There's also these attention brackets. There are so many tools within the markup plugin. Highly recommend, especially if you are in the tutorial workspace. The next plugins we're going to take a look at are these amazing dynamic transitions from premium VFX. All we're going to do is rather than going down here to the bottom right where the transitions normally are, we're actually going to go up to our titles and you'll locate them under premium VFX dynamic transitions. Now you might be asking yourself, why would I want to use titles for transitions over the regular transitions? This is because it gives you so much extra customizability on your clips. Everything is nicely color coded. If it is a short version of an animation, it will be red. If it is a long version, it's going to be blue. You'll also notice that each of these are labeled with an A and a B. Version A is what you put on the first clip. So let's say I want to put rotation left A on the first clip here, leading into this next clip. Then we would take rotation left B and drag that onto the secondary clip. So now if I play through, we have this really nice looking dynamic animation. There are so many benefits of having it in your titles. If I wanted to, we could actually take the rotation and we could take down A and place those on top of each other. Not only is it going to rotate left, but it's also going to go down. So if I press play, you can see how the animation plays out. It drops down and spins left. The same happens with the B. So let's say we want to use left down B on top of rotation left B. We can create our own custom transitions by using the building blocks that are given to us by premium VFX. You can also select each one of these, go over to the right side. We can enable the bounce feature, which is going to give it a little bit of a bounce when it lands. Plus we can also drag up the amount of motion blur and the prism effects. So if we really want some really cool prism effects here, I'll show you a frame there. We can drag those up as much as we want and adjust the opacity. So you can have so much fun with this incredible transitions pack from premium VFX links below just like with everything else. Finally last but not least is add motion. My personal opinion is that the keyframe editor in Final Cut Pro is very lacking. Now normally that's a problem but if you pick up add motion it's going to absolutely change the game for you. I have this gorgeous looking FX factory logo here. And let's say I wanted to add in some animations. Typically we would go into the scale. Let's say we wanted this to pop in. We would add a keyframe, drag that down to zero, then move forward, add another keyframe, and then we would let it play through. But you'll see how jarring that animation is. There's no fluidity to it and it's just really bad looking. <laughs> Let's go ahead and remove that with Command Shift X so all those animations are gone. Now the first thing we're going to want to do is actually place this icon into a compound clip. That is because right now it's actually in a square aspect ratio and that's going to cause some problems with the plugin. Now that is not Add Motion's fault, that's actually just some limitations in Final Cut Pro. So all you're going to do is right click this PNG and we'll select New Compound Clip. And now that's going to actually convert this PNG from a square aspect ratio over to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Now that we've done that, we can jump on over into our effects and locate add motion. You'll see we have all of these effects here as well as if you go into your titles, you can also find add motion effects here as well. We're going to go ahead and just look at the effects today, but there are so many videos showcasing this that I've put out on the FX Factory channel. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag in add motion onto our icon and you can see it's already got this little animation happening to it. Now that is far from all you can do with this. We can actually drag exactly where we want this icon to come from. So we can make it come in much faster by dragging this way out. We can also change the duration. So you can go all the way up to 10 seconds if you really want this animation to happen over a really long time, or we can make it much shorter. We can also change the takeoff type. 
So I'm gonna set this to back, and if we drag this over, it almost pushes back. Actually, I'll drag out the duration so you can really see it. So it's gonna push back a little bit and then push forward in the animation. So again, if we shorten that, it's got this really nice little dynamic push to it. Now you can see there are so many options here and I won't get into all of them, but some of my favorites are if we wanted to actually have some really nice rotation, we can drag up the rotation amount. And so now it's going to actually spin in. And then if we wanted the animation after it's moved to this point, push B and create a cut. And then we can change the move type from A to B to B to A. So now it'll move in just like so and then it'll slide back out. But what's great is you can get really dynamic with this and we could select that and we could actually shift it over to the right hand corner and we could vastly change the type of animation it has. So now it's flipping in just like so and then it flips out just like that. So you can get so creative with the animation types in AdMotion. I highly, highly recommend it. Again, there's a video below that describes many more of the features of AdMotion, but those are just some of the features that I use on a consistent basis. So that is five exceptional plugins for Final Cut Pro that I really think that every editor should pick up. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Dylan Bates, the Final Cut Bro. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn so much more about plugins in Final Cut Pro, I super recommend you subscribe to the FX Factory YouTube channel. With that being said, I cannot wait to see you in the next one.